CataractCoach.com. Dislocated IOL and capsule tension ring and capsule bag. The whole thing's loose. How do you fixate this lens or do you want to exchange it for a different lens? Let's take a look. I'm watching for the first time with you and let's see what's going to happen here. Making some marks. Looks like 180 meridian off to each other. Oh, you're going to do a Yamane. You can tell already. Right, so doing the markings there, two millimeters behind the limbus and then two millimeters from that. So those are going to be the tunnels for the Yamane. So it looks like you can explant the entire lens here. Let's see the technique. So here's a paracentesis. And so here's another one. Important to know ahead of time what you're going to do to explant it. Are you going to fold it inside the eye? Are you going to cut it in half? Or are you going to do what? So I like the triumcinolone. That's going to help stain any vitreous that's there. And let's see what's going on with this whole lens. Looks like um, a vitrectomy set up there to clean up any entangled vitreous. Smart move there, because if there is vitreous entangled around the IOL, you don't want to tug on that vitreous and cause a break in the retina. So I like that idea. Now going here underneath it and grabbing it. You want to grab it and you want to bring it up in the anterior chamber. And so remember, with the CTR, it's going to be huge. Here comes like delivering a baby. There's the whole capsule bag plus CTR plus IOL complex. So that's all brought up through the pupil in the anterior chamber. There you can see the CTR as well. Wow, interesting here. So in a case like this, let's see what's going to happen here. Enlarging an incision to maybe 3-ish millimeters. And what's that going on here? Maybe up, oh, pulling out one. There you go, pulling the CTR out, grabbing that. You can take that out of the eye. Yep, that's a, out it goes. And then there's the lens. We can do our twist and out technique. And that lens can be expanded pretty easily too. But yeah, CTR's out. Now you just have a remnant of the bag in there along with the um, IOL. So let's see the technique here to remove the lens. Uh, are we going to cut it and twist it now, fold it? What are we going to do here? More viscoelastic, always a good idea. Make sure there's no um, vitreous around. And now... Let's see, rotating inside the eye a little bit. You want to bring out that one haptic probably. And there, yeah, there you go. Bring out the one haptic. And now let's see the technique here. Yep, it's going underneath it, probably more viscoelastic. All righty here. And now, so yeah, it looks like a twisting out technique. We like that one. That's our favorite way of doing it. So grabbing that IOL optic edge and then twist, 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 and pull it right on out. So everything looks good there. So yeah, in this case, you definitely have, or you already have the anterior vitrector out. So you may as well put some more triamcinolone and take your time and do a nice, clean anterior vitrectomy here. Remember, too, sometimes with the Amani technique, you can get entanglement of any vitreous with the IOL. And so to avoid that issue, make sure you do a nice, thorough, clean anterior vitrectomy here. Take your time. Video is obviously edited and sped up here. But that looks great. Much better here. And so more triumcinolone can also help stain again. And then let's see the Yamane technique. So Yamane technique is, you can put the IOL in, let's do handshake technique. No, just putting it in first. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So let's see, delivering it. There's the leading haptic, there's the optic, and there's the trailing haptic. All righty, and now let's see the technique. So here comes the 30-gauge needle going, having a good length of tunnel in there on the sclera, and then entering, very nicely done. And now we're using the micro forceps to feed that haptic. Yep, I like how the lens is being repositioned to kind of get it into a favorable position. That looks great. There it is, externalized. Very nicely done. And notice how that was done without too much manipulation into the vitreous. So there's a little um, flange that's being created there with the cautery. And let's see the other side as well. So more viscoelastic, always a good thing. We can always take the viscoelastic out at the end. And so here's the path for the other side. There it goes, and entering inside. And then I like this technique of doing the lens in the anterior chamber. The nice part here is you don't have a lot of uh, acrobatics going on in the anterior vitreous cavity. That's really nicely done. I do like this technique here. And so now bringing out the other haptic, doing a little bit of cauter here. Important to mark at the beginning of the case so that you have this lens well-centered. If your marks are 180 apart, it won't be very well-centered. Now get those little flanges pushed into the sclera. Don't just leave them under the conge. I like them pushed in the sclera. And so then, they're, then they have essentially no chance of eroding. But you see them there just under the surface of the conge. You may want to push them back a little bit more. 
This looks very nicely centered. Do you need to do a peripheral aerodotomy? I don't think you do in the Amani technique, and that's really not typically done. If you wanted to, there's no harm in doing it. You already have the vitrector right there. You can just use the vitrector to do that. But at the end here, very important to clean up any prolapse vitreous. That looks great. This patient's going to be pretty happy. Really neat case. Thank you for watching.